Uh, hi there. This is a. Uh, let's get this right. It's a TPA thirty one twenty two stereo amplifier chip. I've been having some struggles with this one <coughs> to get a decent sound stereo off a breadboard. After doing, well, you know, I tried to follow some instructions out there. Um, the, the the first lot I tried to, I could put a one kilohertz um, sinusoidal wave into there, and I could have it amplify it, but I couldn't actually play music for it. <coughs> it wasn't having any of that at all. Um, but it did let me do the amp, uh, put the function generator in and, and <coughs> amplify that sinusoidal wave. So, after doing some more research, I decided that um, I was probably better off splitting. Um, so this is all the output side, it's not even on the same board. Um, let's try and clean this up a little bit. <coughs> um, it's not perfect, absolutely not, it's not perfect. But it's not bad either, it's not bad. And from everything that I've read, um, this sort of circuit doesn't do very well on a breadboard. These breadboards are not designed for these frequencies. So, you know, I can't expect it to be perfect. Uh, I've still got some experimenting to do, but yeah, I'm just going to click play and. We're not going to upset the copyright people. <clears throat> oh. If you can hear that, that the higher frequency side doesn't, it's not very, very good. <clears throat> I really want this to spin. But bass wise, bass wise, it's not too bad at all. up a little bit and oh, give a bit, bit of a better view of the actual the actual board here and how I've got this set up. So I've got my power coming in here and oh, I've got my power coming in here and I've bridged across to here and these are 1000 farad caps just going around. Uh, this this actually here does not need it's probably causing interference it's been here. Um, it's just Um, <clears throat> this is just random stuff on this. Um, I, I just there's a load. Of, it's not even very good. Um, I don't think this is a FLAC or, or um, wave format, so it's lost. You know, I, I don't know if it's uh, 192 uh, kilos or three uh, or 320, but whichever it is, it's not CD quality. Uh, anyway, let's go back to this. So, yes, yeah, so I've got my two little inputs. I sold these. Uh, directly now one of the um, this is the way that it says on the data sheet one of the ways I've seen on YouTube is you have to see the other way around and they do not work it just does not work like that but <coughs> but so I've sold these ones here anyway to get a, a better connection and it did it, it, it did make a hell of a difference doing that so I'd suggest that's a good one for anybody um, Who's thinking about doing this? Um, and yeah, I think you just gotta basically do a couple of crap out of it. But and this is my first stereo amp. I've done the LM8 for eight three six. I did another one uh, a couple of days ago as well. Where's that? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, this one's a little. 
if I can just read that underneath there. TDA oh, 7267. This one in my hand here. And this is pretty good actually. This has got quite a bit of uh, punch to it base wise compared to the LM8836. But still, <clears throat> uh, yeah, this isn't, this isn't bad at all. Yeah, it's, it cost a couple of quid this one because the chip was a couple of quid and these are about £1.20 I think each. So, you know, there's a few quids worth here. And, yeah, but still it's not too bad. <laughs> There's a lot of room for improvement. I'm just playing it off my phone. I don't have any other MP3 player or anything. Oh, let's not get too carried away. I can't, anyway. Oops, I don't know what it's doing there on the... I don't know what that's picking that up like, but it doesn't sound terribly bad. There's a lot of room for improvement um, to have this completely clean and crisp. It seems to be on the higher frequencies that there seems to be uh, a bit of distortion, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and figure that out. I've managed to get rid of a little bit because I did have these coupled over here um, between the positive and negative, where this where this connects into here. But I, I've moved it here and. You have to listen real hard, but there are slight improvements when you do it, so it's just chipping away at each little bit, like I'm going to change over this one for the same type as this one, because this one's polaritized. This one isn't, but this, they're both one mic, so I'm going to see if that makes a difference in a second. And I'm also going to change these ones out here as well. Um, sorry that I'm wobbling all over the place. I'm going to change these out for... 0.22s. This is a 0.22 here, and I'm going to try a couple of these in here and see what that does. I'm also going to set it up so all of my power side goes to one side, and all of my negative side goes to the other side. Even if I straddle across the top of the chip, uh, as I understand that that was going to make some improvements. But what I wanted to do first was just make it like this, and then I will be able to compare it once I straddle across the top of the chip with wires rather than have a negative and positive going down the same sides um, the power signals and the audio signals the amplified signals so I think hopefully there's going to be some improvements there because there's definitely need some improvements for this but anyway I just thought I'd show that and share it because I'm quite chuffed that I've actually got to have that working I consider it a bit of a success with some cleaning up needed to be done. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.